Hello Math 133 students. I received a request for help for this question, which is 4.2.13 in my stat lab. And as per usual, I'm going to click on the view an example and I'll walk you through the example and that should hopefully help you with the problem itself. Okay, so we have a data set here and it says the least squares regression equation is 73.6x plus 15.374. So they're giving us the equa equation for the regression, which is very nice. And we'll be able to use that to answer questions, hopefully. There, sorry, I just wanted to make that window a little bit bigger. Okay, so the scatter diagram indicates a linear relation between the two variables with a correlation coefficient, or they're even giving us that also, of 0.6585. So it completes parts A through D. So predict the median income of a region in which 35% of adults 25 years and older have at least a bachelor's degree. All right, so let's look at this. We have X right here, which is the bachelor's percentage, right? So the percentage that have a bachelor's degree in the region. And then we have Y, which is the median income. So when they're asking us to predict the median income for a region in which 35% of adults have a bachelor's degree, what they're telling us is that X is 35, and they're asking us for the Y value. All right, so I'm going to type this up here. So we have our model, which was given to us, is Y hat equals 731.6X plus 15374. And so for letter A, they're telling us that X is equal to, now it's 35%, however, if you look at your x-axis, you can see that they're using the numbers as percents. They're not switching them to decimals. So we're going to leave it as 35, right? And they're asking us y is equal to what? Okay, so well, we can use our equation and we can put in instead of x, we can put in the number 35. And so all we need is a calculator or decimals to be able to find that. So let me grab decimals here. That was a problem from earlier. So 731.6 times 35 plus 15374, and I get 40980. So that would be my answer. So I would say that this is equal to 40980. And then this would be median income. So this is probably in dollars, right? Because it's your income. So I could put dollars. I'm going to put a little comma in there because we're used to having $40,000 written with a comma in it. All right, so there's the answer for part A. I can click here and continue, and you can see, hey, look, <laughs> it did it right. Oh, did I type it wrong? Oh, let me see here. Yep, 40,980, just like I said. All right, so then for part B, in a particular region, 31.1% of adults have a, at least a bachelor's degree. The median income in this region is 35,627. Is this higher than you would expect and why? Okay, well, first thing I would need to do is figure out what I would expect. So if you can see for letter B, they're telling me that X is 31.1. So it's saying 31.1% of adults have a bachelor's degree, right? So I would wanna find my prediction. So right here, I'm finding a prediction Sorry about that. I spelled the word prediction wrong. <laughs> there we go. So that prediction would come from knowing this value, right? So if I put 31.1 in here, and I would go grab uh, Desmos again to make that happen, or you could grab a calculator. So in instead of 35, I would make it 31.1. The beautiful thing about Desmos is that you can copy and paste like that. <laughs> Right? And so I get 38126.76. All right, so I would go in here and I got 38126.76. Okay, so now if the actual the actual value which was given to us in the problem is 35627. So then they're asking us, hey, is that actual value above or below your prediction? Well, my prediction was 38,126, and my actual is 35,626. If I wanted to, I could find the residual, which is the difference between the two. 
the residual is the actual minus the prediction. So if you take actual minus, if I could spell the word actual, right? Minus prediction. That would be 35627 minus 38126.76, right? So if I can find that value, that would be my residual. Actually, I should be able to find it with Desmos. Look at that, copying and pasting, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right, so it's negative 2499.76. So I go back here, I can say that this is equal to, there we go. That is my residual. So our value, our um, actual value was below. So the income was lower than expected by $2,499.76. Because the prediction we expect is right here, but what we actually got was right there. And so we're below that by whatever the residual amount is. And of course, over here, I can click continue and it'll tell me the exact same things, right? They didn't even ask for the residual, but I wanted to show you that because that kind of helps you understand what a residual is. All right, so now let's interpret that slope. So if we go back and look at the slope, the slope is the number that's multiplied by the X, which in our case is 731.6. So slope. And I think it's easiest to write it as a fraction. If you remember that it's 731.6 over something. Um, and I'm in, in case you're wondering, I'm using the equation editor that's available for free in uh, Google Documents to do this. <laughs> so 731.6 over one, it's always over one. And you can always use that to help you interpret it because what that is, is this change in Y over change in X, right? So it's the difference in your Y, which in our case is the median income over the difference in X. And that little triangle symbol, that's, in, that's a science term, or it's called delta. It's a Greek letter, but it's used in science all the time. It just means difference. It just means subtraction. Now, what was our unit for our change in Y here? So the change in median income, because that's the Y, and change in bachelor's percentage degree, right? The bachelor's degree percentage. So what is that saying? For every one increase in the percentage of people that have a bachelor's degree, we expect the median income to increase by 731.6. And that would be um, dollars. So let me type that up one second. There you go. So on average, and we were talking about a region's percentage that have at least a bachelor's degree. I forgot about that. So bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctoral degrees, PhDs, MDs, those kinds of degrees. So on average, if the percentage um, in a region that have at least a bachelor's degree increases by one, then we expect the median incre uh, income to increase by $731.60. Because our income, of course, is measured in dollars, and the other variable is the percentage that have at least a bachelor's. All right, so then let me click continue. You can see in their answer, they've, they're saying the same thing I wrote. They're just kind of manipulating it slightly. So it's it's saying on average, it's saying for f they write for every percent increase. So that's saying for every 1%, for every single percent increase, which is the same thing I wrote, but I kind of phrased it differently. And then the median income increases by $731.60. So they're just kind of twisting around the phrases, but it's still saying the same thing. All right, now for letter D, explain why it does not make sense to interpret the y-intercept. Well, let's figure out what the y-intercept is first, and then we can figure out why it doesn't make any sense, which is actually pretty common for it to not make any sense at all. Now let's see. Now remember the y-intercept is a point. A lot of students forget that, and that can get them into trouble. It's a point on the graph, so it's 0, 15374. Okay, well, usually, in forgetting the zero part, usually students forget 
the part that's the most important to them. Um, usually the x equals zero doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, that's actually a pretty common problem with y-intercepts in a statistics course. However, in this case, zero could make sense. Um, you could have a region that has nobody that has a bachelor's degree. I mean, that's possible. But then you run into the other problem, which is look at your data points. Right? If you look at your graph for just a second, the lowest percentage of at least a bachelor's degree is just a little bit above 20%, say like 21% for those three dots that are kind of to the farthest left. Right, well, that's it, right? We're, we're so far away from x equals zero. It's way outside the scope of the model. So that's the reason it's not going to make sense for us is it, it doesn't it's not that you can't have a region with zero bachelor's degrees, um, although it's possible, it's unlikely. But the bigger problem is that it's completely outside the scope of this model. It's way outside of our, our bigger data set. So that's what we can write. All right, so I just kind of wrote that up. Um, it's unlikely but possible to have a region with 0% of the population having at least a bachelor's degree. Just to put that in context, in the U.S., that would mean there are no doctors, no lawyers, no teachers in that area because to do all of those things, you need to have at least a bachelor's degree. So just something to think about. It's, it would be very unusual to not have any teachers, for example, in your region. Okay, but having a 0% with at least a bachelor's degree is way outside the scope of the model. As the lowest X value in our data set is about 21%, and that's far away from 0%. And then if I scroll down, yep, that's what they're saying. And that was the end of that question. All right, so I hope that helps answer that question and any questions you had about it for section 4.2, number 13.